Can this cheap Chinese lens compete with the lights of the famous Leica Noctilux or the new Voigtlander Nocturne 50mm f1? Hi guys, Matt here from MrLeica.com. So yes, in today's video we are looking at the TT Artisans 50mm f0.95. I'll consider whether or not it's a worthwhile purchase for various Leica cameras, including film, digital Leica M and also mirrorless cameras. We can look at some sample photos and then stay with me till the end and I'll give you some comparisons to other fast 50mm lenses and finally my verdict on whether or not you should potentially buy this lens. If you're new to the channel, we review a lot of Leica M out lenses and Leica equipment. So if that's something of interest, feel free to subscribe. Okay, so what do you get in the box? The lens, you get a metal lens cap and a standard plastic rear lens cap. And then inside the nice white box, you get instructions on how to calibrate the lens together with a calibration tool. If you saw my last video on the 7 Artisans 35 1.4 lens, this is very similar where on the back, you will have three small grub screws, one, two, three. And then we use a tool to loosen and tighten those three screws to calibrate the lens. My lens came reasonably close, but not, not bang on. If you're using mirrorless, you don't need to do any calibration, but if you're going to use this on a, like an M rangefinder camera, you will need to calibrate the lens prior to use if you're planning to get accurate focus and shooting the lens at wide apertures. Okay, if we quickly cover lens spec, this lens has got a maximum aperture of 0.95 with half stop clicks going down to f16. This aperture scale is really nicely dampened and it's got nice clicks. The focus is really smooth and you've got a close focus distance of 0.7 meters. If you saw the Voigtlander Nocturne 50mm f1 video, that lens only goes as close as 0.9 meters and the Leica Noctilux 50mm f1, that only goes down to one meter. So this lens is already more useful than both of those two lenses because you can get that much closer, giving you an even greater shallower depth of field. You've got your hyperfocal distance on the top, the same as on Leica lenses, and it's all very nicely done with, I think it's black anodized aluminium with, I think it's laser etched numbering. And obviously it's a copy of Leica. On the back, I'm not so impressed with the gold rear lens mount. Maybe it's fashionable in some countries. The lens does extend slightly as you focus, but it's all super smooth and no issues. As we mentioned, this is like an M out and so so it is range from a calibrated once you calibrate it. So that means if I pop it onto a Leica M camera, why do they make it gold? It looks so crappy in gold, especially on a silver camera. <laughs> so there you can see the size on the M240. On an M240, it is going to be front heavy. It's too heavy for an M240. In terms of viewfinder blockage, <laughs> you're going to get viewfinder blockage of a lens of this size. So there you can hopefully see that the range from the blockage is quite significant for those of you that get annoyed by such things. This lens is multi-coated as you can see by the green tint and the optical formula is 11 elements in 8 groups. If I can get the light to hit the lens you can see there's 14 aperture blades which is a high number of aperture blades for a 50mm lens. So this is going to give you smoother round the bokeh balls as you can see by me stopping the lens down. So that's a nice addition. In terms of the size of this lens this comes with a 67mm filter thread and there is no hood included. So I'd recommend looking on eBay for a vented lens hood like this and get a 67 rather than 52 in this example screw on lens hood which will just screw onto the front. <laughs> this lens is weighty. The weight is 687 grams or 24.2 ounces. That's heavier than both the Voigtlander Nocturne 50 F1 and the Leica Noctilux. If you want a simple hack, I replace the metal very nice lens cap with a plastic lens cap from eBay, uh, which is just, you just buy any 67 mil cap and it will clip on. That reduces the weight and then there's no problem if you lose a plastic cap, you can always replace it. Okay, so for any of you Leica users, which camera is this lens best suited to? If you're shooting a Leica film camera, for example, a Leica M6, I would highly recommend getting the 1.4 viewfinder magnifier because it's going to be very, very difficult to hit focus unless you've got amazing eyesight with a lens as fast as 0.95 even when it is perfectly calibrated to your camera. The second problem you will have with film cameras is because it is such a fast aperture, you only have a maximum shutter speed of one over 1000, which means you're gonna hit your maximum shutter speed very easily, especially if you're shooting, say, ISO 400 film. So for that, I would recommend something like a KNF Concept ND filter. So this setup obviously works for digital as well, and it's also useful on the M240. 
which has a maximum shutter of four thousandths of a second. If you're planning on using a Leica M8 or Leica M9, you can have the same limitations as with film in that you can only use the optical rangefinder viewfinder. If however you're using an M240, M10, M11, I would highly recommend using the EVF that clips on the top of the camera to then use your 10 times magnification button using the electronic viewfinder and that's going to massively help your precision and critical focus. I would not recommend using focus peaking on this lens if you're using the lens wide open because focus peaking is not accurate enough for a lens as fast as this. Now personally for those of you that have got both mirrorless cameras and rangefinder cameras I would 100% recommend using mirrorless not a rangefinder camera. The size and weight of the camera balance is much better on the Leica SL and being mirrorless it's very very easy to critically focus. This has I believe a 1.4 megapixel EVF with it when it's attached to the top of the camera. This has got a 4.4 megapixel EVF electronic viewfinder so it's much easier to critically focus on an SL compared to my M240. The additional benefit of using mirrorless is on the example of the using the SL you have a maximum shutter speed of 16 thousandths of a second which is two stops faster than four thousandths of a second on the, the M240 and on top of that you also have the option of ISO 50 so a combination of ISO 50 and 16 thousandths of a second you're never going to need to use an ND filter when using the TTR stands 50 0.95 on the Leica SL camera. Before we move on one additional benefit of using the L mount Leica SL is you can use the L to M close focus adapter from seven artisans I can put a link below to all of these things I'm mentioning and this then allows you to focus even closer than 0.7 meters to get kind of crazy bokeh shots or detail photos. Okay so what about testing this lens? I must first say a massive thank you to Pergear who kindly sent me this lens making this review possible so thanks Pergear. I'll put a link below. They do seem to be the cheapest place to buy this lens if you take advantage of their 5% off by subscribing to their mailing list that then makes them cheaper than both B&H and Amazon for example. I've had this lens for quite a few months so I've been able to test it on both the Leica M240 and the Leica SL and I think I probably also used it on the Lumix S5 as well. Because this is M out you can use an adapter to then convert it to any camera so I would highly recommend this for mirrorless cameras such as the likes of the Panasonic Lumix S5 that I use but also Sony shooters, Fuji shooters, Canon and Nikon and then anybody else that makes mirrorless cameras. <laughs> Okay, so here's me out and about with the Leica M240 and the TTR Zan 50.0.95. I found if I stopped the lens down, I was happy to use the rangefinder for focusing and I had no issues. However, if I wanted critical focus, I did use the EVF on the top of the camera. So here's an example. On the left is the original RAW file and then on the right is the RAW file plus my Leica SL Mr. Leica preset applied. Here is another example to show the colours of this lens and with a preset applied you can get really nice rich saturated vibrant colours. So next I wanted to do my usual sharpness test shooting one of my cameras in the garden to see how the sharpness and bokeh changed as I stopped the lens down. So these are unedited raw files at 0.95 and then at 1.2, 1.4, f2, f2.8 and f4. And now here's the same image at 0.95 with a Mr. Leica black and white preset applied. And you can see once you've applied preset, it is more than sharp enough, wide open for, for my taste and gives a really kind of nice glowy kind of vintage look, creative look from the rendering, especially at very close focus distances using the close focus adapter. And then I also did the same test using the Leica Noctilux 50mm f1.0 version 2 to see how it compared to the Noctilux. Now both lenses seem to be at their best in terms of contrast around 2 2.8 from my eyesight but the edge sharpness looks like it gets better on the Noctilux as it stops down. That said I would say the TTR sand is acceptably sharp from or more than sharp from f2 onwards and kind of very sharp by f4 in the center and mid parts of the image. Now in terms of flare this lens gives you crazy creative flare. You may want to get a hood if you want to buy this lens and you don't want to have flare in your images. As you stop the lens down the flare pattern also changes and gets probably even more crazy. I was also testing for sun stars and the good news is if you like sun stars if you stop this lens down you can get nice sun stars at certain apertures. Just be aware you will get flare as well as sun stars in certain situations. In terms of vignetting this lens does vignette wide open in the corners but not as bad as the Leica Noctilux. As with most fast lenses as you stop the lens down the vignetting will become less. And then when it comes to bokeh you get nice round smooth bokeh balls in the centre. And as you stop the lens down they keep their roundish shape. If you move the bokeh to the corner of the image you will get slight cat eye bokeh. 
and then here's a real life example using a closed focus adapter and as you can see here the background just melts away to nothingness okay so what about portraits if you follow me on social media you'll find me at mrlika.com on say instagram you will notice that i tend to shoot female models this lens is amazing for portraits and it's really nice shooting towards the sun especially if you can get some kind of bokeh in the background and i think this lens will be particularly good in the summer months when there's more leaves on the trees again uh, here is me using the lens now in black and white with amy and it's when i had the sigma 50 1.4 lens so i was kind of comparing both of those two lenses if you see my other videos where i was in poland i also had the ttr sand 50 0.95 with me for my taste this lens is more than useful for female portraits shot wide open at 0.95 However, if I want a bit more sharpness, sometimes I'd stop it down to f1.1. If you're taking portraits by using available light, this lens is really useful in the winter months when we have limited light in the in the Europe and in the UK. And so I found having a maximum aperture of 0.95 really useful when I could keep the ISO reasonably low and still be able to get kind of clean looking nice shots. I was also interested to see how this lens compared to the new Voigtlander Nocturne 50 f1. So I did a shoot with Stacey while I used both lenses. Here are some example photos using the TTR stand and stay with me until the end and I'll show you side by side comparisons again versus the, the Voigtlander. And lastly here's a photo shoot I did in a hotel and this lens is perfect for dreamy looking boudoir style portraits. Okay next up comparisons. How does this lens compare to other fast 50mm lenses? So first up here is me shooting the TTR Tan 50 0.95 next to the Sigma 50 1.4 but I happen to have both lenses on the same shoot so I thought I'd share the results. On the left our MG is shot by the Sigma 50 1.4 art lens and on the right with the TTR Tan lens. You can see the higher sharpness from the Sigma and much more of a modern clinical look. Next up, the Leica Noctilux 50mm f1 version 2. Now I would say the TT Artisan is better corrected and I think it's slightly sharper shot wide open. And next, how does it compare to the Voigtlander Nocturne 50 f1? So on the left we have the TT Artisan 50 0.95. On the right we have the Voigtlander Nocturne 50mm f1.0. Now from my eyes, I can't really tell them much of a difference between the TT Artisan and the Voigtlander. Some photos, the Voigtlander seems to be sharper, maybe nicer photo if you want to call it that. And some photos, the TT Artisan seems to have done a better job. They do seem to be very similar. And when you can't see the darkness of the corners in, this, in these examples, they do seem to both do a similar job. In this example, I do think the Voigtlander is slightly sharper, shot to wide open, but because you can get close with the Voigtlander, I think the Voigtlander is still better, being a more creative tool. Okay, so what about price? How much does this lens cost? You can buy this lens in Pergear, as I mentioned, which seems to be the cheapest option, and that can be worldwide. It doesn't need to be UK or US, it can be anywhere. $755 or £585. Pounds. Now, to my mind, that is amazing value for a lens which offers you 0 0.95. It wasn't so many years ago that I bought the Noctilux because I needed a fast lens for wedding work when using the like M9, which had a limited high ISO. I wish TT Arsana made the lens back then when I could have bought the lens for £585 pounds rather than having to sell a couple of limbs and organs to pay for the Noctilux at that time. It is an amazing value lens when you do compare it head to head against something like the Noctilux. If we now compare the price to the likes of Leica and Voigtlander, the Voigtlander costs almost $1,800 or £1,650. So that's three times more expensive than the TTR San 50 0.95. And then you've got the Leica Noctilux current version, which is the 50 F 0.95, $12,795 or £9,500. Pounds. That's 16 times more expensive. Okay, so what is my verdict? Can I recommend this lens? I would say absolutely yes. I had low expectations for this Chinese lens as I hadn't touched Chinese lenses up until I think the end of 2021. And I'd always used Voigtlander, Zeiss, Leica and vintage lenses, even kind of Soviet lenses. But I had zero interest in Chinese lenses. This lens has opened my eyes to how great some of the Chinese lenses are. I've also got the 28mm 5.6 from TTR San and also the 7 Artisans 35 
having used both versions of the Leica Noctilux and also the F1 Voigtlander, I would say the Voigtlander is closer to the new Leica Noctilux 50 0.95 in terms of they're both more corrected and perhaps more clinical if you want to call it that and I think the TTR artisan is closer to the older Leica Noctilux 50 f1 version that I have which is more creative and less perfect and less corrected more dreamy wide open and more of a painterly look great for things like female portraits I think it's going to be amazing for weddings it's going to be in my bag for all future weddings I've got five weddings booked for this summer and then using it with the close focus adapter I can use it for really dreamy kind of detail shots as well or if you do any kind of low light work maybe you're a street photographer and you tend to prefer to go out after dark it is a bit of a heavier lens in terms of a walkabout lens and so with that said i would recommend it especially for mirrorless users less so for m users and maybe even more less so for m film users i think the nocturne is better for m cameras because it's smaller lighter and range finder coupled at the box and with that if you enjoyed this video please tap the like button and feel free to subscribe for a chance of winning in my monthly giveaways as always a massive thanks to my awesome patrons and see you all in the next video bye